First of all, as for what the Incarnation is and what Christ is, you could say there's a mystery of the truth that no believer has ever understood. Yes. Now what is the Incarnation of God? Yes. What is the difference between Christ and the prophets and apostles used by God? Please explain it to me. Almighty God says, in fact, the implication of God's Incarnation is that God lives and works in the flesh. God in His very essence becomes flesh, becomes a man. Amen. Amen. God's Incarnation we can absolutely call God because He has divine substance. The prophets and apostles have just humanity. They lack divine substance, and so they can't be called God. Now then, why does God have to be incarnated twice to do the work of saving mankind? What is the significance of His two incarnations? Please tell us. In the Age of Grace, God became flesh for the first time to do the work of redemption. Through the crucifixion, He served as a sin offering to redeem mankind from its sinfulness, to relieve mankind from the curses and condemnation of the law. Mm. The purpose of God's second incarnation is to do judgment work in the last days and thoroughly set mankind free from the domain of Satan and its influence, to relieve mankind of their satanic disposition and resolve their sinful nature so they can fully return to God and be gained by Him. Amen. Almighty God says, the incarnation in the last days has completed the significance of God's incarnation and completely finished God's management plan for the salvation of man. Amen. You're telling us that God in the last days has come in the flesh for His judgment? But that's impossible. Only the Lord Jesus, the one we believe in, is Christ, God's Son. Amen. This Almighty God you believe in is just a man. How could it be otherwise? Your belief that the Lord Jesus is God's incarnation is not wrong. But do you believe the Lord Jesus is the manifestation of God and that He's God Himself? Do you dare to declare that if the Lord Jesus comes back expressing truth, you will be able to recognize His voice? The chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees then clearly saw the authority and power in the Lord Jesus through His words and His deeds. So how could they still brazenly condemn and blaspheme against the Lord Jesus? Wasn't it because they only saw the Lord Jesus just as an ordinary man? And now, pastors say that the one we believe in is just an ordinary human. This isn't any different from how the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees went out of their way to condemn the Lord Jesus and His followers. The word and work of God's second incarnation won't just allow man the chance to see God become flesh, but also allow them to see the fact of God's word appearing in the flesh. See that God's word accomplishes all. Amen. With Almighty God's appearance and work, the significance of incarnation is completed. Amen.